How to identify and recognize the United States AGM-86 Air Launched Cruise Missile or ALCM. The first of the series of weapon entered service in 1982. Now this of course is a Boeing product and it is carried by aircraft of the United States Air Force and was first used in combat during Operation Desert Storm in 1991. The small winged AGM-86C KALCM is powered by a turbofan jet engine enabling high subsonic speeds. Now this is also true of the 86B which is the nuclear tipped version which is the ALCM, the air launch cruise missile, and the 86C is known as the CALCM which is the conventional air launch cruise missile. We can also add to this the AGM-86D which is, has an AUP warhead which is for enhanced penetration. After launch, the missile's foldable wings, tail surfaces and engine inlet deploy. It is then able to fly very complex routes to a target through the use of an onboard global positioning system or GPS. When these first came out, they used TURCOM and that was when a route was pre-programmed into the missile. We also have with this system now, we have the, that is with the GPS, we have an inertial navigation system or INS. I believe that's similar to TURCOM. This allows the missile to guide itself to the target with pinpoint accuracy. So we have the GPS and of course INS. I, said, I believe INS and TURCOM are pretty much the same thing. Somebody feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Before the missile is launched, the wings, air intake and tail are all folded flush with the main body. This feature allows many to be carried by one aircraft. The B-52H is capable of carrying a total of 20 missiles. Now when this missile first went into service, the B-52s back then could only carry 12 at a time, but of course now they can carry 20. With this 20 missiles, we have 8 on an internal rotary launcher and 2 pylon, pylon formations of 3 under each wing. Additionally, the AGM-86B, that's the nuclear tip missile, is capable of being carried both internally and externally by the B-1B Lancer. However, although the B-1 Lancer can carry this weapon, it is the B-52H that is the primary carrier of this cruise missile. And due to the Lancer's current non-nuclear role, generally speaking, only the conventional air launch cruise missile variants are carried. Weapons such as cruise missiles are one of the reasons why the B-52 remains a useful and formidable aircraft today. Cruise missiles allow the buff, that of course is the next name for the B-52, to launch weapons at standoff ranges to often at a range of enemy air defences. These cruise missile carriers working together may saturate an enemy's defences, that is, an enemy's air defences. These cruise missile carriers working together and in concert may saturate an enemy's air defences. Combined with flying at low altitude, protecting against a cruise missile attack can be exceedingly difficult for an adversary's defensive network. And the general specifications for the AGM-86 series are as follows. 8,150 pounds or 1,430 kg length, 20 feet 9 inches or 6.3 meters, diameter 24.5 inches or 62 centimeters, range approx 1,500 miles, warhead W80 thermonuclear weapon and the AGM 86B that's around 200 kilotons, or of course a conventional warhead and the 86C and an AUP warhead and the 86D. Now the AUP warhead is a warhead that of course is used for hardened targets such as bunkers and that kind of thing. The warhead weight is around 908 kgs on the AGM 86C and it's around 1362 kgs in the 86C block 1. We have a 1200 pound class advanced unitary penetrating warhead on the 86D. Now this is an impressive warhead and it can be used against all manner of hardened targets. Wingspan for these missiles are 12 feet, 3.7 meters, operational range 86B, 1500 plus miles or 2400 plus Ks for the 86B. AGM 86C, we, the range is classified, but they reckon around, around 700 miles or 1100 Ks, I'd say it's a lot further than that. The speed AGM 86B, 550 miles an hour or 890 Ks or mark 0.73. And the AGM 86C is classified, but nominally high subsonic. And now let's look at the identification features for the AGM 86 cruise missile. Main wings, when deployed, are swept back 
and low mounted with blunt tips. The wings unfold when launched, as we already know. In this picture, the main wings are folded under the body of the weapon, as you can see if you look at that arrow there. The missile has a single engine with a single round exhaust at the rear, as you can see in that blue oval. Notice here how the air intake is semi-recessed into the top of the missile prior to launch. When launched, the intake deploys, just like the tail and the wings do. The missile has a high mounted intake. The intake curves upwards over the fuselage of the missile. There is a gap between the oval intake mouth and the missile body when the intake is in operation and deployed. And you can see the intake again there in that green circle. The fuselage has a rounded nose, as you can see in the red oval at the front. Now the CALCM nose may differ slightly, although I'm not 100% sure about that yet. We also have flat sides that begin just past the nose of the missile and back to the tail section. The underside of the missile is also flat. The rear of the missile from the single round exhaust to the tail curves upwards as you can see in that green oval. And the bottom of the fuselage rear curves upwards to the exhaust as you can see in that blue line under the back end of the missile. And the missile appears triangular shaped from the front and the rear both deployed and stowed as we can see here. The wings and tail are also folded up in this picture and of course in this picture here we have three missiles on an underwing pylon but as you can see here even when they are all folded up and stowed away but also when they're deployed from either the front or the back this weapon takes on a triangular appearance. And here we have another CALCM, conventional air launch cruise missile. The top of the AGM-86 missiles are flat. Notice here the mouth of the intake is oval shaped. And of course here we just have a diagram of the AGM-86 series missile. And just as you all know, I'm quite a fan of diagrams. And here we can see it front on, side on, and also from the underside. And the tail section rise up, rises up higher than the main body of the weapon and it includes the engine section. Of course the tail section is at the rear of the weapon. The single tail is wide at the base and tapers to a straight vertical midpoint that then becomes rectangular and we can see that in that red oval. The top of the tail is flat or I should say has a square tip. The tail flats are tapered with blunt tips low mounted and have a negative slant and you can see one of the tail flats there deployed at the rear of the missile. We actually can see both of them but only have one highlighted with that green oval. In this photo the main wings which are yellow are, are stowed away of course. The tail flats are also stowed away, stowed away. On the rear section they are folded up on the rear section of the missile. And the tail, of course, is also stowed away on the rear section and it is folded down to the left with the tail flat covering it. 